Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining. My name is Greg Waynehouse and I'm the Field Segment Manager for Water for Burkitt UK. Now I'm going to show to you today the fluid calculator that we use to select the right size of solenoid valve. Now there are two types of calculator available on our website. Um, the first of all, if you go to our Type 3361, for example, this is one of our control valves. When you scroll down to applications and tools, uh, you'll see that there is a sizing tool. Now, I'm not going to cover that today because that is for, uh, for control valves. And my colleague Kieran Bennett is going to cover that uh, in a few days time. However, if you go on to any of our solenoid valves, say, for example, we have the type 6213 here. This is a general purpose water solenoid valve. When you uh, scroll down a little bit further to applications and tools, you'll now see that it's fluid calculator. Before I open that, I'll also show to you a little bit further down the download section. Uh, and the one tip I'll always give everybody is to use these filters. Say, for example, if we select uh, data sheets and we select uh, English, it will just bring up that one particular product. Now, I'm going to need this data sheet here. I've already pre-opened it here, you'll see. And you can see there's a bit of a, a description, um, some products that it can be combined with, along with um, some specifications a bit further down. Now, when we scroll down even further, eventually we will get to some example part numbers. Here we go, uh, where you can see um, things like the circuit function, the port connections, orifice sizes, and then KV value. Now, I'm going to leave that there because we're going to use that in a moment. So when we go back to our type page on the solenoid valve and we open the fluid calculator, the first thing that it's going to ask is for the medium that you're passing through the valve. Now, the reason why this is uh, important is because the calculations that it does here is also based on the media density. So I'm going to keep things nice and simple. There is quite a long list of products, but I'm going to select water. Now, what we're going to use this for in the first instance is to um, calculate a KV. Now, what a KV actually is, is a flow coefficient factor that says you can put a certain volume of liquid uh, through the valve at one bar pressure drop at 20 degrees Celsius. Now, you'll also uh, often come across CV, which is the US gallons per minute version at a, a one, pressure bar pre sorry, one uh, PSI pressure drop. Now, to get from uh, KV to CV, we can simply take the KV and multiply by 1.11. Now, you may also come across QNM, which is the gas version in litres per minute. Uh, to get the QNM, we can simply take the KV and multiply it by 1,078. But in this particular instance, we're going to stick with KV because it's what you'll find in most of our data sheets um, at the moment. Now, what's quite common is for a customer to just give us a line size, um, and we can still use that. Um, we can still use this calculator to calculate what kind of pressure drop is going to be required um, to allow the full flow of media to go through the valve. But to start with, we're going to look at the KV value. Uh, and to do that, we can use our data sheets as well. But what I'll do to start with, we'll use some nice round figures. So say, for example, we'll select uh, 10 meters cubed per hour at uh, a one bar pressure drop, so four bar in three bar out. Now, temperature um, does play a part in, in, in the back calculations, but I don't think it, it has a, a major effect on the, the calculations we'll see here on screen. So as you can see, a one bar pressure drop, we've got a KV of 10 meters cubed per hour. And that's the same for any one bar pressure drop. If you go from five to four, you can see we've still got a 10 bar pressure drop. And even if we go from 10 to nine bar, uh, we've still got a KV of 10. We go back to our four to three. We can then use this KV value now to try and find uh, the right type of solenoid valve. So if we go to our data sheet, we need to achieve a KV of 10 at least. So you can see here on screen that a G1 or one on a quarter with a KV of 11 would be suitable for this particular application. Now, what if we change those uh, pressure drops? Now, say, for example, if we double the pressure drop, so we go from four to two, you will uh, eventually see when the system catches up that the KV now has dropped to seven. So we now need to find a valve that has a KV value greater than seven to be able to achieve the flow rate of 10 meters cubed 
with a two bar pressure drop. So when we go back to our data sheet, you can now see that actually we could select the one inch valve with a 20 millimeter orifice and potentially make the valve a little bit more competitive. Or if the customer allows it, we could even go to a three quarter inch with a 20 mil orifice and achieve the same KV. So that would make the, uh, the valve even more competitive as well. Now, what if we go back in the other direction and we only give it a half a bar pressure drop? You'll notice that the KV value now is 14. So when we go back to our data sheet to achieve a KV of 14, we actually need to increase the line size and the orifice size to G1 quarter 40 millimeter orifice because that has a KV of 23. So the valve would be more expensive because we've only got a small potential pressure drop available. What uh, I'll also do now is to show how we can use this to calculate the pressure drop. Now, this is the most common thing that we generally tend to use this calculator for. Now, um, what I'll do is I'll actually use the, um, the one inch DN20 we've got here with a KV of 8.3. So we've got 10 meters cubed per hour at a KV of 8.3, get rid of that, sorry. And you can now see that to achieve a 10 meters cubed per hour with a KV of 8.3, we'd have to have almost one and a half bar pressure drop across the valve, which is quite a lot for most applications anyway. So to achieve something that'd be a little bit more realistic, let's pick a bigger solenoid valve. So say for example, we pick the, um, the two inch version with a 40 millimeter orifice and a KV of 30. Uh, so a KV of 30, calculate. You can now see that the pressure drop has dropped quite dramatically to 0.1 bar, which is a little bit more realistic, unless of course your customer can increase um, the, uh, the pressure into the valve anyway. So um, it's a bit more realistic um, to get that um, application pressure to you know, what, the, what the customer would be expecting to, 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 um, to see. So the other thing that we can also use this for as well is to calculate whether we can achieve a flow. So if we um, click on flow now and say, for example, um, we've got our two inch one again here. So we've got a 30 meter cube and we'll um, we'll put in um, eight bar in seven bar out. We can see that we can achieve a 30 meter cubed per hour with that particular KV. But again, if we only had half a bar pressure drop, you can see that with a KV value of 30, we can only achieve 21 meters cubed per hour of flow through that valve. So that I feel this is a really good, useful tool to be able to calculate various different um, scenarios. The other thing that I'll just mention to you as well is on this particular sheet, you can also create um, your own medium, so you can give it a name, uh, you can put in what the density is, select whether it's a gas or liquid, and then press calculate, and then it will give you calculations as you need. The other thing I'll show to you as well is if you search on our website for the Burkitt solenoid valve selection chart, this is quite a, a useful little document that shows you um, the category of solenoid valves, the type numbers, the circuit functions, whether a differential pressure is required to open the valve fully, different types of process connections and pressures, um, as well as the types of materials that are available for those type numbers as well. Then a bit further on, you'll also find some conversion tools. So things like water vapor pressure tables, pressure conversions, temperature conversions. Uh, there's lots and lots of information. It's quite a useful little booklet. So I hope that was a, a useful webinar for you. If you have any questions, please do give us a call, drop us an email or find us on LinkedIn. Thank you very much indeed.